so many of us are going to be able to do that. I see what it is. He can do that as well. Yeah, I know. Hey. Good evening, everyone. How you doing? Good evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, let's stand and just open our night uh, worshiping God.
sacrifice that you made your son, Lord. Um, as we just were able to celebrate this Christmas, Lord, your son coming, and Lord, that purpose to redeem us, God. We don't deserve your grace, we don't deserve your mercy, but Lord, you still free to give it to us. And I don't know where I would be without it, God, and I thank you so much, Lord. You deserve the highest praise, because you are Lord of all. And you are in control, and you are enthroned higher than anything else, Lord. Love you so much, and you so just as a reminder, we have our offering box up there. Lord, does pause to give if you are feeling to give. Um, and do we have any announcements? Uh, no? Okay. Alright, well let's um let's just pray and then just continue our time in worship. Heavenly Father, again, I come before you humbly, God. Thank you that we can here. I pray that you just quiet each and every one of our hearts, that we'd be ready to, to just come before you um, with humble hearts of worship, God. I pray that we would lay aside our burdens. Lord, for some of us, uh, last year was really hard, and I pray that we would just um, lay that all before your feet, that we would thank you for the and see where you were um, in all those hard times and the good times, God. I thank you that uh, you were there with us when we were hurting and when we were joyful, God. You were there no matter what, and we can always run to you. Um, and I thank you that, uh, thank you for all the blessings, Lord, to come and, and the blessings that I can look back at 2020 and, and be thankful for. I pray that everything that we do today and tomorrow, the next day, Lord, that we would um, be able to thank you for that. Because, Lord, everything comes from you, God. Um, I woke up this morning because you woke me up, God, and that is a blessing. Enough. And I thank you so much for that. Um, you may. Let's stand, please.
Thirsty 
Let me just add my Happy New Year to, to Josh's. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. It is, uh, it's, it's great to see you. I, um, I greeted a friend this evening, and I said, it seems like forever since I saw you. He said, I just saw you last week at Christmas Eve. I'm like, oh my gosh, Christmas Eve was last week? It seems like a month ago. Well, speaking of, um, speaking of Christmas Eve, um, I'm guessing that most of us here have a favorite Christmas movie or TV show that perhaps we watch every year or have watched every year since we were kids. I know uh, among my most cherished childhood traditions is watching Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. How many of you have at least seen it once? How many of you have seen it multiple times? How many of you watched it every year since 1964? <laughs> so, now you're not. I didn't watch it in 1964, by the way. But I read about it, which is what I want to share with you this evening. Most of us here, well, all of us here, know the story. The famous reindeer went on a journey with two traveling companions, Hermie the Elf, who wanted to be a dentist, and the wild-eyed explorer, Yukon Cornelius. And the part that always captivated me was when they found themselves in a place called the Island of Misfit Toys. It was a land, as you know, filled with poor, rejected toys that nobody wanted because there was something wrong with them. There was a toy train with square wheels, a water pistol that shot jelly, a jack-in-the-box named Charlie, a cowboy who rode an ostrich, a doll with low self-esteem, and an elephant covered with spots. All of them banished to exile, shunned to the fringe of humanity, never to be chosen or loved. And I suspect that that scene was included in the show to teach children empathy, to teach them compassion, to teach them not to judge others just because of their shortcomings, because the reality is all of us have them. And boy, did it work. Now, here's the part that I did not know because I was not old enough to watch the original broadcast in 1964. But when the show first debuted in 1964, the original version ended with the toys left on the island. 
never being rescued. And that ending resulted in hundreds of angry letters from children all across America who were so upset that the toys were left there forgotten. And so, the following year, the producers changed the script. They added a scene, a correction that became a part of the new show in 1965 and has been there ever since. Now, as you all know, at the end of the show, Rudolph and Santa, they land on the island. Santa scoops up all the toys, puts them in his bag, and loads them onto his sleigh, giving them to boys and girls around the world who excitedly receive them and give them the one thing that these misfits have always wanted but never had, love and acceptance. Throughout the Advent season, which seems so long ago now, we've discovered just how misfit our human condition really is. As much as God created us to be people of peace, hope, love, and joy, we are an imperfect people, amen? At best, we are only able to achieve an almost Christmas. If we're all honest, we are all, really, just a bunch of misfit toys. Oh, I know, we don't want to admit it. We spend a lot of time and effort trying to project to other people that our lives are a lot better and more together than they really are. But you and I know well, deep down, that we all have our own hang-ups and habits and heartaches. We live in relationships that are broken, a past that is full of shame and guilt, and a future that is fraught with worry. And we have this constant replay of old tapes in our minds designed to convince us that we are such a long, long way from the kind of life that we know we should be living. If only someone could rewrite the script for us and add a scene to do for us what we can't do for ourselves, to scoop us up and to show us that kind of unconditional love and what a second chance might look like. Good news, that's the meaning of Christmas. In Jesus, God became a misfit, just like us, a human being, susceptible to the same vulnerabilities that we face every day. God drew near us so that our story can have a new ending with the hope and the possibility and the promise of a new life. And there's just one thing that we need to do in response. We need to agree to come on board. All those misfit toys had to do was to jump in to Santa's sleigh for an adventure that would change their lives. And according to John Wesley, that should be our response when it comes to Jesus, agreeing to follow and commit our lives to him. In 1780, many years after the first covenant renewal service in Spitalfields, London, Wesley wrote a booklet called Directions for Renewing Our Covenant with God. And it became the standard set of instructions for Methodists to use in preparation for their annual watch night service at the start of every year, which we did last Thursday evening. And these spiritual instructions were a, a bridge between the season of Christmas and New Year's. And in a certain sense, it was a way for people to offer to God the best Christmas gift of all, the commitment of their hearts. And in the preface of that booklet, Wesley did a bit of screenwriting himself, spinning a metaphor that feels a lot like the revised ending of Rudolph. He used a memorable phrase that for him captured what it meant to renew one's commitment to Christ. It's a phrase that I hope that you will adopt as your theme for this upcoming year. And it's this, adventure yourself in Christ. Don't you just love that? Here's what he said. He said, adventure yourselves with him. Cast yourselves upon his righteousness as that which shall bring you to God as a poor captive exile that is cast upon a strange land, a land of robbers and murderers where he is ready to perish and having no hope either of abiding there or escaping home alive. See, Wesley said that our sins had placed us into exile. 
separated us from God, basically putting us in the land of misfit toys. But there's hope. As God comes to us in Christ as a rescue boat pilot who comes to save us, Wesley goes on to say, he says, and meeting for a while with a pilot who offers to transport him safely home, Jesus embarks on an adventure with him and everything he has in his vessel. You should do likewise. Christ offers if you will venture forth with him and when he, then he will bring you home and he will bring you to God. Friends, it may be that the best gift that we have to give this Christmas is the one that we choose to give to God. It is a fresh commitment to follow Jesus and a renewal of the covenant that God has made with you through Christ. Over the years, Methodists have started the new year with a covenant renewal service or a watch night service on or around New Year's Eve. And again, we shared that service on Thursday evening. We were challenged with a, a wonderful sermon by Pastor Mark Montgomery from the Nazarene Church. And I don't want to repeat that service again tonight. But I want to touch on Wesley's five steps of preparation for covenant renewal. And then we'll share what's called the covenant prayer, which is on our website. If you go to our our homepage, firstseabrain.org. If you go right to the bottom of the page, you'll see the Wesley Covenant Prayer. If you want to go look at it, maybe reflect on it some more this week. So Wesley's first instruction was confide in God. He said, first, set apart some time, more than once, to be spent in secret before the Lord. You all know that to confide in someone means to, to put our trust in that person. It involves a willingness to, to be truthful and vulnerable, even with our deepest, darkest secrets. Confiding in God means taking off the mask that we so skillfully and diligently wear in front of others in the confidence of God's faithful and unconditional love. Confiding in God also includes acknowledging and confessing our sins. It involves that delicate and and sometimes painful work of admitting our weaknesses and declaring our dependence on God to overcome them. And doing that is probably going to be uncomfortable. But Wesley didn't allow for shortcuts when it came to this part. Confiding in God isn't easy, but it is the first critical step. Secondly, Wesley said, compose your spirits into the most serious frame possible, suitable to a transaction of a very high importance. So after you've confessed your sins in confidence with God, you know, it might be very tempting to, to let the pendulum swing completely in the other direction and say, well, you know what, at least I'm not as bad as so-and-so. And the tendency then is to compare ourselves to others, to make ourselves feel better at the expense of someone else. But Wesley warns against that kind of overcorrection when he calls us to compose our spirits, which means to remember that we are not the center of the universe. In Romans 12, 3, Paul says, we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. We should instead consider ourselves with sober judgment, remembering that we are sinners and all equally children of God. The third Wesley said, grab hold of God's covenant and rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength whereby you may be enabled to perform your promise. Trust not your own strength nor the strength of your resolutions, but take hold of God's strength. I think that, that we could compare that analogy that Wesley uses of taking hold to a trapeze artist. One who launches from the platform holding that trapeze bar. Mid-flight, that trapeze artist has to make a choice to let go of that bar and spin around in midair in order to grab hold of the next bar. And for a few terrifying fractions of a second, that artist is in midair holding neither bar, held up only by the hope that the other artist has let go of the other bar toward him with just the right force at just the right time so that when the time comes, that second artist can grab hold of it and swing safely to the other side. That's what renewing our covenant with God is like. It means letting go 
of our old sinful ways, as painful as it might be, in the full confidence that God has done everything necessary to provide us with a renewed life on the other side. So we need to remember that the act of renewing our covenant with God isn't something that we came up with, but it comes from God. Fourth, Mr. Wesley instructs us to resolve to be faithful, having engaged your hearts, opened your mouths, and subscribed with your hands to the Lord, resolve in his strength never to go back. The word resolve comes from the Latin word, resolvere, which means to loosen or disintegrate. Resolving to be faithful means loosening or letting go of everything that would pull us back into a life of sin and unfaithfulness and never to go back. You think about the marriage covenant. It is so much more than just a wedding ceremony. It is a lifelong commitment to strengthen and to sustain that marriage over the long haul. And Wesley believed that our covenant with God required a daily choice to follow God's will and to be obedient to God's commandments. And fifth and last, Wesley says, being thus prepared at some convenient time set apart for the purpose, get to work. In the most solemn manner possible as if the Lord were visibly present before your eyes. Fall down on your knees and spread your hands forth towards heaven. Open your hearts to the Lord. Prayer is the lifeblood of our relationship with God. It involves opening our hearts to God in a set-aside way to both listen to God's voice and also to share our hearts with God. Prayer isn't some magical incantation where we get what we want from God if we just say the right words. And I would also say it's even more than a conversation because sometimes we can pray without words. Prayer at its core is an intentional awareness to God's Spirit. I love that phrase that Wesley uses, as if the Lord were visibly present before your eyes. Isn't that such a powerful image? A recognition that God is always with us, always speaking, always listening, and always ready to guide us along the way. And I believe that prayer is so important that we're going to give you as many opportunities to pray going into this new year as we possibly can. A little bit later on, we're going to pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer together, and I hope make it our own. We are going to offer a 21-day prayer challenge based on this prayer. We are going to be participating in Abide 21, 21 days of prayer and fasting along with other churches in the community. And this year... I am calling our first Sebring family to pray for justice and racial reconciliation as we take part in this year's Martin Luther King Jr. observances. Don't leave me out there as the only cracker walking with our neighbors, all right? I need y'all out there, okay? I'm already a little scared. But I'll be talking about that more next week. Friends, there's no sense hiding from God that we are not perfect. We can go ahead and admit to ourselves and to God that we have made mistakes. And then we feel like the chips are stacked against us when it comes to breaking free from this misfit life. But the good news of Christmas is that God is here. God has come to you in Jesus to be with you and tell you that you have not been forgotten and that you are not alone, and that God is calling you to this whole new adventure in 2021 in which you can follow Christ's lead and embody his example and learn from God to love him and to learn love others. And it doesn't matter how hopeless the world might seem to you. God is with you to give you an altogether hope to set your soul on fire and to go out and to make a difference. And it doesn't matter how conflicted or how broken you might feel. 
God is with you to give you an altogether peace so that you can let your light shine to the glory of God. And it doesn't matter what kind of life you have lived in the past. God is with you to give you an altogether love so that you can have a chance at a brand new start. And it doesn't matter how long your journey has been or how lost you might feel. God is with you to give you an altogether joy. And to tell you, Merry Altogether Christmas and Happy New Year. Welcome home, Miss Fit. Welcome home. I'm going to invite Josh and the team to come up and lead us in another song before we share communion and prayer this evening.
God, 100% man, you live the perfect life, Lord, that you could take our sin upon yourself on our cross, Lord, that your blood washes white as snow, that we can be seen as holy before you, God. Lord, I pray that this would cause us to live a life that not our own, that this, this fact, Lord, of your grace and your redemption would cause us to live a life that is for you and for you only, God. Take away our selfishness, Lord. Thank you for making this sinner holy, Lord. I pray that would be holy voices. And I would be yours completely. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you to remain standing. And Josh's prayer is just the perfect segue to us saying this prayer together. And again, I just want to invite you to make this prayer your own, not just tonight, but for 2021 uh, and beyond. So would you join me, please, as we pray together? A prayer in the Wesleyan tradition. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee, or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Thank you. You can sit down. As we... Come to the table figuratively <laughs> this evening. Uh, first of all, does everyone does everyone have communion elements? Anybody not? Because there's plenty of them. Anybody not have communion elements? Okay. Um, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. And so let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Let's pray. We don't presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give your word and we shall be healed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you made us in your image to love and to be loved. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. 
On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offered for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here tonight and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. May your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit of your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let's join together in the family prayer of all Christians as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Keep me body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. You ready to take us home?
this new year, and I pray that we would give you that. We would give you the great praise that you deserve, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. No one else, Lord. Thank you so much for tonight, um, and just for this sweet time of worship and getting to your word and realizing, Lord, you need to be all this year. Bro. Love you so much in your name. Amen. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Amen.